Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Endless Runner Unity tutorial series. So, last time we looked at how to uh, create coins that can add score to the system, and now we need to have a way to uh, randomly place these coins within our world, so that as we're running along, we have some bonuses to pick up along the way and have a little bit more fun. Uh, so, first thing we're do, gonna do, we were, I was demonstrating a way that doesn't really work very well at the end of the last video, so I'm just gonna delete this platform here, and I'm gonna take this coin and basically we're going to create, uh, much like we did with object pools for the uh, platforms, we're going to create an object pool system for the coins. But we're not going to put it in with the other uh, the other platform pools because we want to do a special thing with the coins. So we're going to create an empty object here and I'm just going to call this the coin generator because that's what we're going to use to generate our coins. And we're going to create a script for that in a second, but we just have that there for now. And we're going to create a child of that. So we right click on it and click create empty. And we'll call this child, uh, this will be our coin pool. So to create our coin pool, we need to add the uh, object pool script to that. So we'll type that in here. Uh, and we need an object for the pool. and. Much like with the platforms, we don't want to use the coin that's here in the scene. We want to create a prefab out of that. So we go to our prefab folder, drag the coin into there. Bam, just like that. And now we have a coin prefab. So we can delete this, this one from here as well. And then in our coin pool, we can drag that coin into there. And pool the amount, let's say, because there'll be a lot more coins than platforms probably, let's say 15. That'll do for that. Uh, so there we go, then we have our object pool created for our coins, so now we need to create a way to bring our coins into the world. So to do that, we're going to do two things. We're going to use a coin generator script, which will, basically what it'll do is it'll place three coins into the world uh, based on a certain position. <clears throat> and the way we're going to generate these coins is, as a new platform is generated, as we're going along, It'll basically call from the platform generator script, it'll call call the coin generator and it'll say, okay, now a new platform has been created, so create some coins to go on top of it. And it's basically that's all there is to it. It's not going to be too complicated, it's nice and straightforward, but uh, hopefully it'll work nicely for us. So we're going to create a new C sharp script in here and we'll call this our coin generator. And we'll open that up in mono develop. I will also open up our platform uh, platform generator as well. Over here, there we go. So we got them open here, um, and so with our coin gener our coin generator script, obviously we're going to need to be able to access the object pool for coins. So we're going to have to create uh, a public object pooler, and we'll call this we'll just call this the coin pool because we know that's what it is. Um, and like I said, we're gonna have it generating. Oop, get rid of that. We're gonna have it generating um, three coins at a time. So what we need to do is say, okay, so we'll have say one coin in the middle, and we'll need a coin to the left of it and a coin to the right. So we need a certain distance between those coins. So we're gonna have another variable here called public float distance between coins. So here we go. So. And because this is something that's going to be called at certain times, we're not going to need to use the, the start function or the update function. So we'll get rid of them altogether. And we're just going to create a new function and we'll call it public void to make sure it can be accessed from outside the script. Uh, and it's a void because it doesn't return anything out afterwards. It just creates objects in the world. Uh, we'll call this uh, spawn coins. Fairly straightforward. Um, and what this will need It'll need to be sent into it. It'll need a, a position in space. So this will be the position where the coins are going to be generated from. So the so to get that, we need to put in between the brackets a vector tree. We'll call start position. Oop, if I could spell position, there we go. Okay. So then we put some curly brackets, and then within here, basically all we're going to do is create a coin, set the position of it, and then make sure it's active in the world. So we're going to create a new game object here that we're just going to call coin1. We're going to say that is equal to our coin pool dot 
guess pooled object which if you remember if we go back to our object pooler script here if it opens up there we go our get pool object is our function for uh, creating a game object in the world so perfect go back to our coin generator so we've got a, a coin pool that get pool object that's going to be a new object called coin one uh, put our semicolon at the end and basically we could just say coin pool that get pool object and it would create a, an object in the world and that'd be fine but we don't we need to have we want to be able to give a position and stuff like that so that's why we say game object coin one so we say coin one dot transform that position is equal to our start position and then after that we just say coin one dot set active to true perfect okay so now we have one coin generating as our platforms are being generated well we haven't got a call set up from platform generator yet but so we got one coin here but we need more than one we need three coins so what we're going to do is just copy this here and paste it again uh, and obviously we can't just create the same coin one again so we're going to rename this to coin two and change coin two here and here and now instead of our just it going to the start position we want to make it go to the start position but a little bit to the left so instead of saying it's equal to the start position we're just going to delete that and we're going to say new vector tree and the x value will be our start position dot x minus our distance between coins just like that and then we just say start position dot y and start position dot z perfect so now we've got coin two being set a little bit to the left so we again we need to do the same with a coin tree so we'll copy that again paste it here and the reason we're copying rather than copying the original we're copying the new one is because then we can save some time because to put it to the right all we have to do is change this minus to a plus and we hit save and now we have three coins being generated but at the moment there's nothing calling this script we need something to call the script to say hey we need some coins in the world and the way we do that is in our platform generator so obviously we're going to need a reference to our coin generator script that we just created so here we'll say public public coin generator the coin we'll just call this the coin generator just so we know what thing we're talking about in the script and actually we might as well just make this private because we don't need to be able to mess around with that in the editor um yeah uh so then then oh in our start function we need to just say the coin generator is equal to find object of type coin generator so that'll just find the only object in the world that has the coin generator script attached to it because we should only have one because we don't need more than one so then down here is where our our uh, script is created which is right here it's in this little up if statement to check in where it is um, and where we, we want to put it here just after the new platform is created but before the transform position is moved forward again to the end of the platform because we want to use the middle of the platform here so here we're going to say um, because we have our coin generator referenced earlier all we have to do is say the coin generator dot spawn coins that's what I named the function wasn't it yes yeah, spawn coins spawn coins so coin generator dot spawn coins and we put some little brackets now because in our coin generator script we created this, this little thing here that we need a position for our coins to start off with we need to decide the position from our platform generator script here so within this we're we could just use the current transformed opposition which, which would be the middle of the platform but the problem then is our coins are being created in the middle of the platform to be one here one here and one here that's no good to us so what we want to do is move it up a little bit so the coin is being created like here and then here and then here so we're just going to say a new vector vector 
tree um, and the transform dot position dot x will be the same transform dot position dot x and then transform dot position dot y plus we'll say one f so our one f is just one float one one unit upwards it should be enough to get it above the platform uh, and then we'll just say transform dot position dot z so that's our final z position i think that should be yeah i created too many brackets there there we go okay so that's it that's just the basic of how to just call that function from our platform generator so now if we go back in here what we should do is just um on our coin generator script once it's compiled oh we didn't even add it here so that wouldn't do anything first so on our coin generator here so we have our coin pool we need to uh, hook that up so we'll drag our coin pool onto there and our distance between our coins let's just put that to say 1.5 no we'll just leave it at one actually so it'll be relatively close but that's okay uh, and now if we play the game we should see all the coins appear above each platform as it's created so there won't be one on, on this platform but every other platform as you can see ahead of us in the scene view yep all our, all our coins are having oh there's a big advert um got distracted there um all our coins are being created but as you can see oh we're being left with coins um uh, left over from the previous runs through the game so that's not good that's obviously not what we want so we need to destroy our, our coins uh, and rather than having to create a whole brand new script to destroy our coins basically all we have to do is on our coin prefab much like we have on our platform destroy we have on our platforms we have a platform destroyer script I, we probably should have just called this object destroyer because we're going to use it again for the coins and we'll probably use use it again for other things too uh, so we might rename that at some point but for now that's fine so now the coins will be destroyed behind us um, and the only thing at the moment though is that our coins are being created on every single platform and that's kind of not very interesting we want to kind of add a bit more random to it so it's not being created on every single platform but just on some of them because chances are in the future we're going to have like danger and stuff on the platforms so we don't want to have every single platform also having coins as well so basically all we have to do is create a random thing to decide sometimes you should create create uh, coins sometimes you shouldn't and basically we're just going to use a number value uh no, not private we need to make this public public um f float uh we'll call it random random coin threshold so basically what we're going to do is pick a number between uh zero and a hundred say and if the if the number if the number a random number picked is less than this threshold so say say we were picking a number between zero and 100 and we call this say 75 so then we'll randomly pick a number and if that random number is less than 75 then we'll create the platforms but if it's greater than 75 we won't create uh, sorry not create platforms we won't we won't create coins in that situation and so basically all we do here is around our coin generator uh, little line here we'll just say if random dot range between 0 F and 100 F so if a random number between 0 and 100 is less than a random coin threshold that we just created if that's true then run the little bit of code that's in between these brackets here so now if we save we go back into the game and once it gets going here we go so as you can see okay we're getting oh i haven't set the number that's why <laughs> we're getting nothing generating because on our uh, platform generator 
we haven't set this number up. So we'll set this, like I said, we'll set it to 75. Um, it's a number that you can just tweak and fiddle around with until you feel you've got something uh, useful. Uh, and as you can see, so we're getting some coins being created here. We seem to be getting a run of all the coins. There we go, we got an empty one. Coins, no coins, coins, coins. Well, I suppose if we choose 75, chances are three quarters of the time, roughly, uh, we're going to have coins. So this, in this kind of situation, we'll end up with a lot of coins. But if we do, say, pop it down to 25, then we should get less coins in our little world. So there you go. That's how to randomly decide whether the coins are going to be generated and how to generate them automatically along the way. As you can see, our coin generator pool is working away there. It's regenerating coins as we go along. The coins that I'm missing. And it's all working just exactly the way we want it to. So there you go. That's the basics of how to randomly generate those coins. Uh, you can do more and different stuff with it. If you wanted to have your coins, say, um, if you wanted to have coins in between platforms, for example, you could wait till after the transform point is moved over to there and just like spawn coins a little bit higher up in the air, maybe, if you wanted to do something like that. But again, that's something that's up to you to try out and have a go and see how it would work for yourselves. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll be back soon with some more platform endless runner goodness. Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.